Hello and welcome everyone to another legacy video. Uh, some of you guys wanted me to feature more, you know, tier one decks, and uh, here we are. I'm playing um, Juju Beans Grixis Delver deck that he used to top eight a challenge on this past weekend, and um, this should be a sweet one. Um, this deck basically has normal Grixis Delver stuff, like, you know, the eight one drops, the eight cantrips, the free counters, uh, removal suite. I will get into um, in a second. But this deck has four copies of Psychic Frog. So I played this deck before, or this card rather, on the channel before, and tried to highlight what this card does. So it's a two drop that potentially can keep drawing you cards. Um, it can also grow out of bolt range, make sure it's bigger than uh, potential blockers. And overall, you're, you're hoping to get this snowball effect that um, Dreadheart Arcanist used to provide for, for the Delver archetype. I'm curious if it works in, in this deck, because you're not going to have that many cards and like, extra cards in hand to pitch. You're not going to have so many synergies uh, when it comes to discarding cards. I will mention there is a little synergy with exiling three cards from your graveyard and having Merktide Regent in play. So look out for that potent combo. Um, the mana base consists of three volcanic islands because we're main red and just two underground seas so i'm curious if this will ever become an issue um julian decided to play a basic island which you know you can play that you can play another duel you can play up to 19 lands and bolster your colors a little bit but julian wanted the basic island um bobble's pretty standard yeah the removal suite so we have six removal slots here and Julian opted for three Lightning Bolts, two Unholy Heats, and a Pyroblast. Um, with a card like Psychic Frog, it's more important than ever that you can kind of clear the way of your opponent's big creatures. So I, I guess that's why a couple of Unholy Heats made it in here, because um, if you can clear the way and keep attacking, you're generally in a good spot. And one Pyroblast in the main deck, I guess, to kind of get a little edge, uh, go up to 16 sideboard cards, basically, and. Um, yeah, just fight a little bit more against the other blue decks that will inevitably show up. The sideboard has Counterbalance, which is basically a card you want where one drops are highly prevalent. So that would mainly be Ritual Combo and Pseudo Mirrors. You have Negations, so you don't, you know, die before you get going. You have Harbingers, which I'm actually also quite curious about because under a Harbinger, we cannot cast red nor black spells. Then we're, we are playing mono blue. Um, but maybe that's fine in, in the matchups where you want that. A couple of meltdowns against artifacts. Three more pyroblasts to go up to full pl place it after sideboard against blue. Uh, needle as the catch-all. A couple of cages for graveyard. And a submerge to make sure you don't just fall to the first mirrored lage or big knight of the reliquary that comes your way. Um, yeah, that'll that'll do it for the deck tech. I uh, I hope to have some great matches and that you will join me on that ride. All right, round one. I'm playing Grixis Delver with Juju Bean's recent list. We won the die roll, and this hand is decent. I mean, I have four lands, which is not good, but I have a wasteland, and my opponent revealed. Chancellor, so it looks like I'm up against the ne uh, Necrodominance deck, which uh, is very bad news for this hand. So I don't think I can do anything meaningful about it aside from going Bobble, pay for it, draw a card, see what the opponent's drawing, Gemstone Mine. Since they already kept their hand and the deck is very low land count, I would guess that's a bad draw for the opponent. Days of Force. Nope, not quite. So I'm actually thinking about whether I should have given my land drop more thought. Um, if I just die turn one and the opponent's going for it, then that's I can't really do anything about that. So I'm I'm trying to think, what does Underground C signal while the opponent casts the Dark Ritual? I'll try and think this through, because this is actually what, what we can learn from this. Um, if we just get turn one, we can't really learn much um, ab about the actual gameplay. So, rep 
playing the underground sea out over fetching a volcanic island. So the sea and plus bobble. Yeah, that's the thing. The bobble could also mean combo, and underground sea can mean entomb, find the traxa, et cetera, et cetera. So maybe the opponent's sense of urgency, I kind of made my opponent even more motivated for, to go for a turn one. I mean, maybe they do that anyway, but, but I'm just saying, did I, did I help my cause here? Um, but there's no way I'm not digging with bobble. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough. The Volcanic Island would basically say I'm a fair deck, so maybe the opponent has more time. Who knows? So here we're going to see the, the Necrodominance deck in action. The opponent goes Summoner's Pact for Elvish Spirit Guide before drawing the cards. Or how does that work? Okay. The opponent goes to one. Exiles a bunch of spirit guides. Days is too late now. We knew that. Mana Morphos. Dark Ritual. Dark Ritual. Cabal Ritual. Born upon a wind. You may cast spells. This turn has only had flash, draw a card, and now Tendrils of Agony is lethal. Maybe the opponent needs Beseech the Mirror to get to that Tendrils of Agony. Or they already found it. Let's see. This is a matchup where um, where you really need just disruption, right? And if you have disruption, most things will be fine here. There's the lethal tendrils. It's a matchup that can take advantage of, um, you know, the lack of info. Necrodominant. I'm just going to look up that card. So skip your draw step. Okay, so this card is not something you can needle, which is very relevant for its uh, its wording. So let's not do that. Uh, it looks like card like obviously negation, counterbalance. Those cards are going to be decent. The pyroblast is especially good because of that deck uh, running pact of negation as as backup. Okay, so I might just cut a couple of channelers here because the game is not really about the chip damage. The, the game is about saying no to the opponent and digging for as much disruption as possible. So that's why Bobble is better. That's why Psychic Frog is better. Also being blue here, pitching to my seven forces. Um, wasteland. You could easily cut a Wasteland. I, I don't think I would mind that. Uh, question is if I want a random blue card over it. A random blue card that's quite hard to cast. I'm not going to do that. The cages are good against um, Beseech the Mirror. I believe. Um, maybe not. Let's see. Let's look up Beseech. If they cast the card from hand or from library is pretty, pretty important. Exile it face down. Okay, so it doesn't work. Okay. This is a good old, basically, oops all spells matchup that dodges the graveyard. So, yeah, very excited about that. This is an easy keep because I have a force of negation and a blue card. To be honest, I would keep like five lands in this setup, but we do have the Pyroblast backup, which is cool. Um, yeah, the, the Chancellor is annoying because now I don't have double backup. So if the opponent has the perfect hand with Chancellor and Pact, I lose. Gemstone Mine, Petal, take days out of the equation. That worked like a charm last time. Dark Ritual, Necrodominance. 
I pay for my negation. My opponent does not have the pact. Okay, so now I can Wasteland hold up Pyroblast. I think Wastelanding here makes sense because I don't want my opponent to have like second land, just jam Necrodominance. That would be horribly bad. So now we've kind of survived the first Onslaught. Um, and it's going to be exciting if we can, you know, close out the opponent or find another piece of disruption. As I say that, I draw Delver. Um, hmm. Maybe I play... Delver and Volcanic Island. I actually haven't decided yet whether I want to brainstorm on my own upkeep to up the clock. There's something to be said about the clock being important, but there's also something to be said about sculpting my hand better. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try a natural flip here. That does not work. I'll brainstorm. This island is horrible. So let's get that out of there. Uh, okay. So I can go away with Pyroblast, away with land, fetch, underground sea, play counterbalance, play bauble, and not sack it because I want to help uh, flip my Delver with it. This counterbalance is maybe good, maybe bad, who knows. The opponent keeps stalling, but worth noting is all of a sudden the opponent can explode. So uh, let's bobble ourselves here. I find Wasteland, which is a decent draw. This way I can stack them, draw the Wasteland, and then have a fair shot at a Delver flip. Merktide Regent, no thanks. I will fire the Wasteland. I think just, you know, getting rid of as much as possible here is, is playable. I'll play the Merktide, hold up Pyroblast, and leave Artifact in my graveyard. Trying to get in there with the 1-1 one, one Delver. The top of our deck is a mystery for both players. What can we do? We can flip with a Pyroblast. Okay. That is probably going to be impactful because my opponent's only way to win on their end step requires a blue card. But at that point, maybe we have like numerous veils and net packs in the mix. So let's see. Also, now, the more we reduce our opponent's life total, the less damage they can get in with, with uh, or the less cards, rather, with Necro. So, pretty, pretty smooth sailing there. Single force was enough, because we were on the play. <laughs> Just the, the Chancellor plus turn one potential is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we just... Ask ourselves the last question is Lightning Bolt better than Channeler? And I couldn't tell you. Um, so, Channeler in a stalled game will probably be better. And maybe the opponent plays around Lightning Bolt anyway by, let's say, going to four and stuff like that. So, maybe I gain a little bit of equity. Yeah, I'll, I'll 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 try this, but I'm I'm not convinced. So basically, on the draw, if my opponent keeps seven cards, I don't think I can keep a hand without uh, free counter magic. My opponent moves to six, which is uh, kind of funny because that makes my decision hard. Okay, so if I if the opponent goes land ritual necro. I most likely lose the game. If they don't do that, and we kind of play on, then how do I like my chances? Then I want to use this ponder to start digging 
Yeah, I'm gonna keep this because my opponent took a mulligan. I, I haven't played against this deck more than a few times, so this is just my gut feeling of if the opponent keeps seven, I, I can't keep zero disruption. If my opponent takes the, that mulligan, I can keep a hand with with Daze and Cantrip, with seven forces in my deck that I can find off the Ponder. Of course, that seven forces in my deck is also an argument for simply just pressing the mulligan button right away, but um, yeah, I, I think it's just important to try and figure out how consistent is the opponent opposing deck, and then just kind of make rules for yourself that, that so this is game three, but what if I was up a game? What if uh, what if I was you know, down a game like that. That shouldn't really change your your way to play. So if you find a formula, just just follow it and uh, trust that you'll you'll be fine off in the long run. As I say that, my opponent has Mulligan to four, which you would think is a good uh, is a good thing for me, but it really isn't because every opening hand they see um, seven new cards, so. They can just put together this three card combo and the mulligan is undone. So, uh. Yeah, it's an, an interesting uh, dynamic here where if, if my opponent's deck is so all in that. Um, this is just normal practice, which I don't know, then my hand is a bad keep, right? If this deck is treated like an oops all spells deck, um, this is just a bad keep and I don't give myself the chance to win. The other side of that coin is my opponent mulls, mulligans to uh, like some Chancellor hand or Pact hand or whatever, and uh, I mulligan to an even worse hand. That's the, that's the downside of that. But actually, I think my uh, my waiting time, considering my 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 hand here, I actually think that hurt me quite a bit. So let's say I wasn't doing content. Let's say I had infinite reps against this deck. I would just know if I could keep that hand in this scenario and make my decision quick. But there is a chance my opponent got a little bit of a read here. So the opponent's doing their thing, everything's instant speed. Born upon a wind has been cast. And uh it's this is uh this is all he wrote. Just waiting for the final blow here with Penrules or Beseech. Here's a Valakut Awakening, which will severely um make the fail rate uh way smaller. This is kind of cool. This is a game where, let's say, in one month or whenever I've I've had the time to play more Legacy in practice, I'll just kind of know if my if this hand was a good keep or not. Right now, I don't know. Uh, it's uh, it's always interesting with these which decks can take advantage of, you know, unknown information or uncovered data. If you can surprise your opponent, just getting that game win in is very, very important. All right, there's the lethal tendrils. That'll do it for round one. Let's see if we can uh, play some more turns in the next one. All right, we're ready for round two here. For some reason, I just started resolving my mulligans here. I'm sorry about that. I put a, another bobble to the bottom after seeing no lander, so pretty standard stuff. It looks like I want to be, yeah, the, the, these baubles are just, you know, made to be cracked here for numerous reasons. My opponent could be playing a combo deck. My opponent could be playing Orcish Bowmasters. Um, so. Street Wraith. Okay, so we're up against another, another Storm combo deck-ish. Um, this is probably Doomsday and 
we're going to be having a similar game plan that as the as the previous match. I will tell if that's possible. Here's a brainstorm. I'm going to let that go. The street race can kind of undo the fact that you put cards back. You, my opponent will have access to all of them. Drawing one for the draw step and then street racing into the other one. Here's the street wraith. Just gonna check, <laughs> check for the artwork if the opponent messed up. Here, there's an argument for for me to days, um, but I actually think the second days could could be good later on. Wow, my my opponent. Uh, yeah, this is terrible. So my opponent brainstormed end of turn because they kept a one lander, bricked street wraith down to you know fresh library and cast another brainstorm no land. That's one of the worst feelings. Uh, I I know that all too well. Just then the game's just over, and then people will say, "Well, why didn't you wait until you drew a card to get one deeper?" But the the reality is that's not. While that is statistically true, sometimes your hand needs to you know get going, um, before that. So. I always get those comments when I when I miss on my uh, on my brainstorm in that spot, but I, I like I like that play. Um, yeah. So against that deck, I want all my counter magic, and I once again I have a feeling I, I should be looking at baubles and chandlers. Usually, when you play against combo, like back in the old days when Nimble Mongoose, Wear Bear, and Meddling Mage was the creature suite, your favorite ratio was basically drawing one creature and then just a bunch of counters against combo and i think that's partially still true now the thing is we have good creatures pitching to force we have good creatures you know allowing library manipulation and I'll, i'm also bringing in counterbalance so maybe i don't want to mess around too much with uh with cutting chandler but i could cut one uh yeah i'm cutting one channeler and I'm cutting it because it's not blue. It might be wrong logic because the card is like a better card on the battlefield than. Well, I don't even know if that's true. I was thinking about the Merktide. All right, we get a little bit of both worlds here. We have our turn turn one Chandler to get things going. We'll have a Force of Will and a Daze to not lose fast. Opponent's on a Mulligan here, which is. Uh, yeah, I wish I had this hand the last time my opponent did that, but I guess I brought that upon myself. Here's Marsh Flats, which basically says either my opponent's splashing white or my opponent's not playing basic island. Is that true? Here's Dark Ritual. Here's Doomsday. I can't allow that. Uh, so I probably pitched the Ponder because if my opponent forces this through, then maybe Days is good. Yeah, I was lucky here. Now, so now, funnily enough, I have a couple of options. But I think playing Chandler having days is the best one of those, especially now that I found something valuable to do at two mana. So here, I'll Dragon Rage Chandler. We already know my opponent does not have a daze. They would have dazed my force. Now, what I can lose to is another land ritual doomsday. Okay, that does not happen. My opponent has a cantrip here. Okay, here's land. Okay. Let's see. Ritual Doomsday is horrible. If it's Cabal Ritual Doomsday, I look like a champ. Mm-hmm. Another Ritual Doomsday. That is not bad. Not bad. Okay. Hmm. I'm wondering how I play now. What I could do is wasteland my opponent and hope to win with that daze. Problem is, I'm not a legacy doomsday expert, so when I get access to my opponent's exile in a bit, I'm actually gonna do like this, and then you can pause the video and tell me 
the pile that my opponent built here and why I should have played out the counterbalance instead to give myself a chance. One card in hand past the turn. Yeah, pause the video and let me know because I wouldn't be able to tell. I need to read this card though. So bounce spell, surveil one, unauthorized exit. It's a cool name. Force of Will. Merktide Regent. Not bad, not bad. Um, counterbalance. Ah, counterbalance is also very tempting. Wasteland Days. The thing about that is, then I end up returning a land to my hand, and then I can't counterbalance. Ah, I don't know what to do here. I don't know what to do. He wasn't you. All right. We try counterbalance days combo. Hand this this surveil, I guess, makes it uh, quite strong. There's fatal push in response. This is so funny. Ah. Fatal push in response, and I have the days. But I don't know which mana cost I want on top. Probably one. No, what happens if my opponent just goes cycle, cycle? Yeah, then I can daze. Ah, this is so confusing because I'm not sure about like the LED consider package. Let's see if there's any considers out here. No considers, even collective brutality. Lots of stuff here. Hmm. Why would I want that card in play? I mean, okay. Well, let's see what we can flip here. Huh. This is cool. I, I have a, I have a, uh, that, that didn't, that didn't help me. I have a feeling I could have played this a lot better and kind of slammed the door on the opponent, but let's see. So my opponent has zero cards in hand. Are they playing this kind of slow? Um, is that zero any good? Lots of questions. I'll pass the turn here. The thing is, there must be some cavern kill here from the opponent. And if that's the case, then I can't allow my opponent to get all the way down there. Okay, so, so there's to the consider. So at least we kind of figured that out. So consider I flip a land, which could help. But I guess if my opponent just has cavern, I just lose anyway. Um, cavern, uh, oracle, right? So here... I'll wasteland one of my opponent's lands. My opponent doesn't care about that, I, I guess. One, two, three, four, five. Here's some big Merc, which is one turn too late, I think. Or two turns too late, actually. Hmm, what was I supposed to do here? Something about... I think I was supposed to do something where if I wasteland my opponent, I daze that consider, force my opponent to draw this island, but I, my opponent still has island and tavern in the deck at that point. So I think I'm supposed to try and race my opponent. And I do that by keeping my channeler in play, but at that point... That was that was uh that was a tough one. Mm, I don't think I'm gonna change anything. I like my stuff here. The power blasts aren't amazing, but I just gotta make sure to you know counter all cantrips possible. 
Also, we saw a lot of random answers out of the opponent there. Collective Brutality, um, the Bounce Spell, one more card I'm forgetting. Okay, okay. I didn't have that on my bingo card with the Force working. Actually, yeah, trading off turn one there. The opponent was on a mulligan. I had a daze, etc. That was, uh, yeah, the opponent just played better, right? Okay, so this hand is not ideal, but I think it's fine, especially because mm, there's this context of I need disruption in order to keep my hand this and that, so the opponent might try and, you know, sculpt with some cantrips, which will give me time. Um, Okay, we don't want that. You want to play a ponder. Force a will, force a will. Okay, I like those cards a lot. So let's see. I draw one of them now. I actually don't want this volcanic. Um, <clears throat> but if my opponent goes turn one, I want to force pitch. Force, I feel like. But then I draw that crappy land. Yeah, I think I'm waiting to crack the bobble because I want to draw like a fetch away the, the volcanic island that's in the pile. This is kind of calculated, and uh, if my opponent goes turn one doomsday, I will be sad. Oh, I had another bobble. Okay. Then I guess it just didn't change anything. I was like, why did I draw that force? Okay, so basically the reason why I'm doing this, I was doing this, um, is because I forgot about the first bobble. So if I only had one bobble, this was the way to make sure I could fetch away the volcanic and get a new card. But now I don't think it matters, so I should just have an extra card available now. Is that the right logic? If I'm going to play Psychic Frog here anyway, maybe it's better. Yeah, let's wait. Because now I have the flexibility of Normal Land and Fetch Land. Ah, complicated stuff. Let's have a look. If this is a blue card, I'm gonna not going to keep it, right? I'm not going to keep it. Okay, now I'm going to play Psychic Frog to basically put pressure on my opponent. Because then the more my opponent waits, the worse things kind of get. Um, I'm not in a particularly good spot, good spot here. Um, because if my opponent just casts a Doomsday, I have to force with a force. And from there, it's kind of a long way until having um, you know another force. So drawing a blue card there was decent. Because now I will pitch the Merc Tide if I have to. Here's Dark Ritual. Here's Doomsday. I pitch a Merc Tide. My opponent forces back. Yeah, it looks like we're getting crushed today by the Ritual combo decks. So, funnily enough, my opponent showed great skills at building uh, Doomsday Piles. Last game, the opponent went, put Island and Cavern of Souls in the pile to kind of make Wasteland a non-factor post-Doomsday. Which was kind of cool. Oh, Necrodominance is in the deck. Awesome. And here's Brainstorm, so now you're going to see a cool kill out of the opponent. I imagine it has something to do with Lionside Diamond. So here, brainstorming into Lion's Eye Diamond, two more cards in hand. So here comes a cycle, and then in response, you can crack your LED for mana, making it into a Black Lotus. Here's Consider. Beautiful stuff. 
Here's the cycle into the last card. And there's the Oracle. Yeah, beautiful execution here by the opponent. Um, definitely. Also, it looks like they changed their configuration for game three. So playing a little bit around with, you know, the open info from game two, which is a cool angle. So when you play Doomsday, uh, game two, my opponent wanted to be reactive. And then game three, we see Sheldred. We see Murktide Regent. We see Necrodominance. So the opponent wanted to go a bit more threat heavy for, for game three once I saw the full deck. So the theory is maybe I make a few adjustments. Um, maybe maybe I, I don't play out my creature. Maybe I cut some hateful permanent that could have been bounced, etc. And then the opponent just goes with some proactive stuff that I most likely don't have much answers for. Um, the opponent did, had no idea of knowing that I had the full four Pyroblast. I would think Murktead Regent loses a lot of value when the opponent has four Pyroblast. But yeah, I, uh, I, I enjoyed this match. I got, I got schooled, but uh, that's how it is sometimes. All right, let's play one more and see if we can get a win on the board. All right, welcome to the last round of today's video. I'm playing Grixis Delver, and I'm losing while doing it. Let's take a mulligan here. My opponent's on a mold of five, and I have double wasteland. So if I put away a frog, maybe just maybe I can play magic. Opponent's on a mold of four. This it would be actually pretty fun if I just got destroyed by Necrodominus here from a mold of four again. That would be quite hilarious. Let's see what the Mulligan the Four can do. Petal. Dark Ritual. Grief. Okay, so my opponent goes turn one Grief. They take the Lightning Bolt, and then I have seven turns to Sableize. I mean, I... I don't even know who's going to be favored in this uh, situation. It's cool to see Dark Ritual is back and thriving. Three explosive Dark Ritual matchups on the plate today. Necrodominance into Doomsday into Black Red Reanimator. That's pretty cool. Reef gets in there. I'm a champ. I draw the land. I'm going to go for the Volcanic Island because I have double channeler. I mean, even, even double blocking that Grief with double channeler will stabilize the game. The cool thing about a card like Psychic Frog in this position is that even if I make that horrible trade on paper, I can still easily come back into the game with this draw engine. With two cards, no lands. They do know about um, the wasteland, though. So I'm actually going to play this um, a bit conservatively here and attack for one and make a better brainstorm next turn with double channeler. If I'm lucky to flip uh, or like get delirium, I'm racing the grief even. And if I don't, I can just go for the double block that I talked about. Now I'm at 10. Okay, here's a land. That's cool. So, I think here I just play the frog out. Psychic frog. Pass the turn. Double block and play from there. There's even the argument I should have taken one more damage here. Here's a land from the opponent. Not bad, not bad. What I also could have done was... No, this is fine. Two channelers hit the bin, but I have a draw engine. I have a brainstorm. I have a daze. So 
So Psychic Frog can be a bit hard to play with. Like, when do you grow, grow the Psychic Frog? But for now, I'm just going to, you know, draw more cards. Um, I'll brainstorm, see if I can find any more Gasolina here. Negation is very nice. Wasteland's probably not very nice. Neither is Pyroblast, so I can kind of uh, ponder those cards away. Play Bobble, draw an extra card on the opponent's turn. Opponent draws Thoughtseize, which my hand can definitely handle. On Holy Heat, doesn't do a whole lot. I mean, it would have gotten rid of the grief, but that's how it goes. If my opponent just fetches a Swamp and casts Thoughtseize here, I will just daze it, move on with my business. Also, the opponent might notice that I did not play out the Wasteland. But they still think I have it. That's why they can't go for Badlands in that spot, and I agree. Now I'm down to one counter. I want to find a blue card. There it is. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try something here. I'm going to discard the Unholy Heat. No idea if it's a good play. Maybe I should discard the Lightning Bolt as well. Okay, I'll try and discard the Lightning Bolt. If I'm attacking three times, I think it's better. Yeah, this is fine. Um, yeah, let's just pass the turn here. Our, our hand is very strong. So what am I doing if my opponent tries to reanimate a Grief? Maybe that's not the end of the world. Right now, I have days, days, negation, backup. So let's see. If I attack for four now, I, I just want to kill my opponent over, over three turns here. Can I do it better? If I attack here, my opponent goes to nine. Then if my opponent does nothing, I can discard my whole hand and win the game next turn. Almost my whole hand. I think that's reasonable. There's some math there where you really want to put pressure on the opponent. There's also a case for... I should have put my opponent to 8 there because of Reanimate on Archon. Which is a way to get back into the game. So let's see here. Faithless Looting. Mm, I think that's fine. Okay, so we managed to get the reanimator player who mulliganed the four and produced a grief, and that was it. So, uh, great job by me. Um, yeah, we have four good cards. And then we can bring out that, those, that, so... Let's see. Is counterbalance better than two bolts? I think they just might be because of the fact they're blue. Um, Hissing Needle doesn't make much sense. I cut all my removal. Most of my creatures are blue. Okay. Let's try this. See if we can get one on the board here against the, the Ritual Cabal. Those boys really had my number today. Okay, so this hand is weak to turn one. And it's weak to getting grief or thought seized. But you can say that about most mulligans as well. So I'm going to keep this and kind of force my opponent to have a creature or a discard spell turn one. And even if they do, maybe this days plus Chandler can get me into the game. By the way, I should have considered cutting a Wasteland and sideboarding. That card is not too strong against Reanimator. Here's Swamp. Here's Entomb. So this might be uh, simply just to. No, then my opponent should have done it on my upkeep to play around negation. 
I'm not sure about this timing. It's probably bad news for me. Here's pedal. Here's your anime on the Gristle brand. Okay, so that was a quick one. My hand was bad against turn one. And the creature is bad against discard. That's just what happens sometimes. Okay, game three. My dazes are going to be better. My counterbalance is going to be better. I have high hopes for this game. Yeah, this is a very good hand. I have turn one cage with backup. And I even have, you know, my, my opponent's potential broken angle covered. So let's have a look at our own deck and see if we want a new card or the actual card on top. Psychic Frog, yes, please. So here I go. Draft Digger's Cage. Draw. The dream is to have another blue card underneath the, the Psychic Frog. Let's see, is it, let's see if that dream works. There's Unmasked targeting me. Uh, I think I should allow it and just play for the longer game. I feel like my opponent kind of has to take the, the Psychic Frog, otherwise that card is just going to give me so many cards. And here's Faithless Looting. I can definitely accept that card. Depending on my draw, I might just wasteland my opponent's Badlands here. It's not a crazy play, but it is a play that kind of delays the hard cast uh, part of that deck. Here's Bobble, so I guess we can let Bobble be the tiebreaker. Let's see what we're working with. We like the frog. Oh boy. Wasteland. Yeah, Psychic Frog is very strong against Unfair. If you just get that breathing room, that card can run away with the game. Here's Underground C that could represent show and tell for later. Definitely something to keep an eye out for. And then I draw the blue card that I talked about. Wow. That's amazing. So now I have Days and Force Indication. My opponent does not know about the Merktide Regent. Yeah, now the opponent's going to take a few hits before even having three, three mana for Show and Tell. And I have three more Wastelands in my deck. Frog getting in there, draw a card. Another negation, nice. Uh, so how does that work? Does playing a 3-3 Merktide even make sense? I'll play a 3-3 Merktide. Turn up the heat here. So now, even a third land would be a good draw. Yeah, and that's just over. Well, so what what did we learn today? We we basically learned that if we get breathing room, Psychic Frog will take care of the unfair matchup. If we don't allow ourselves to get, you know, into the game and just lose early, none of that matters. So I'm gonna I'm gonna have a good long think about about that that dynamic. Also, to be fair, I need more uh, experience against the Necrodominance deck because is that just an all-in Oops All Spells Belcher type thing? And if that's the case, then how should that reflect in my mulligan decisions or my deck building? I could even see like up upping the amount of interaction um, against that deck if that's the name of the game. Like if I if I'm supposed to play against a Ritual Necrodominance, then I mean, I want eight eight forces to just not die to that kind of stuff. Uh, same like when when this black red reanimator deck was all all over. Like I would rather play one more surgical than I was quote unquote supposed to than lose to that deck. So definitely some uh, some food for thought today here.
I uh, I mean, we already played against combo, so it's not going to be the most um, holistic view or review of Juju Bean's deck, but I liked all of the numbers. The, the, the Power Blast in the main deck, that's kind of a metagame thing. If you think your local metagame will have like 60% blue decks, then for sure, go for it. Um, but that's one of the only things where it's something you can you can tweak. I like the removal suite on paper. Um, I liked having three negations in the 75. And uh, yeah, just overall very, if you feel competent navigating legacy, like as a format, yeah, this deck should be uh, right up your alley. Okay, that's going to do it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed your time here. I did, even though I got a spanking by the first two ritual combo decks. But I did redeem myself and uh, went out with a win. So uh, that, all, that all counts. All right, guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.